Welcome to the daily word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the Revelation to John, chapter fourteen, verses one to five. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were one hundred and forty-four thousand, who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of loud thunder. The voice I heard was like the sound of harpers playing on their harps, and they sang a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures, and before the elders. No one could learn that song, except the one hundred forty-four thousand. Who have been redeemed from the earth? It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. These follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb, and in their mouth no lie was found. They are blameless. This is the word of the Lord. The Lamb and the one hundred and forty-four thousand. November begins with All Saints Day and then comes All Souls Day. This means that our thoughts turn to those who have gone before, to the saints, the souls, and to death and dying. In the church, we speak of the end of times when this world comes to an end, and when our own lives on earth end. This is called eschatology, the doctrine of final things. For some, it allows us to focus on what we hope for, in this world and the next. But for others, it is a scary or even a terrifying time, and becomes a topic we want to avoid. I have known many people prefer to pass over the subject of death. And the final things altogether. When I was a boy, one of my Sunday school teachers used to frighten us with stories from the Book of Revelation and Daniel, those parts of the Bible which speak about the coming of the apocalypse and the destruction of the world. She told us not to celebrate Halloween because this was a time when ghosts and spirits wandered the earth, and we could be harmed. As children, we thought of this as a fun time when we dress up and get candy from the neighbors, saying "trick or treat." But still, I now see that my Sunday school teacher had a point, even though I still like Halloween. Today's text is from the 14th chapter of Revelation, and focuses on John's vision of the Lamb, and of the 144,000 who are the faithful remnant, those who have persevered in their faith. Despite all the challenges of the beasts, John has mentioned earlier. Now we begin to see what is promised to them, and promised to us if we remain faithful. The Lamb standing on Mount Zion is Jesus in Jerusalem, and the voice of the heavens which comes was like the sound of the harpers playing on their harps, and they sing a new song before the throne. It is a vision of the promise. It is a new and beautiful song for the redeemed, the first few fruits for God and the Lamb. It is for the 144,000, a very large number, but a somewhat arbitrary one. It is those who have not defiled themselves with women or women who remain virgins. Scholars disagree about what exactly these verses mean, but they can't be taken literally. The point is that God calls to His own. Those who save themselves for God alone, and those who follow the beast, do not have the last word. Apocalyptic writing, like today's passage, is meant to counter the totalizing discourse of the beasts of imperial power mentioned in earlier chapters of the Book of Revelation. Here we see the alternative vision of the hundred and forty-four thousand. The empire wants to do its work in such a way. That its people will accept its rule as normal and reasonable, but the apocalyptic asserts this is not reasonable. Something else is coming. 
Our world often makes a death-like culture seem normal. War, disease, pandemic, climate change, economic breakdown, the manipulations of the empires of our time. The world around us can subtly turn us from the radically inclusive and grace-filled vision of God toward a vision that looks more like the beast rising up out of the sea. But for all the saints, the holy ones of God, the 144,000 living on this side of the resurrection, there is something for us beyond all the sin and evil we see now. The harpist's beautiful music suggests this. We may reach the end of the road, but there's a new beginning. The 144,000 are often not recognized in this world. They may be the ones who work quietly for peace, justice, healing, economic betterment, and for the climate, or those who keep to themselves and practice simple acts of kindness. The beasts of empire do not win. The alternative vision, the vision of the Lamb of Mount Zion, gives hope for a different future and confidence to work in God's name for such a future, for such a vision, here and now. Amen. Reflection questions. Describe the music of the harpists and the new song in your own way. It is music, it is art, it is a vision. Who are the 144,000? Is their number open or closed? Why choose this number? The beasts and the terror are found throughout the book of Revelation. Today's passage for the Daily Word represents an alternative. In the world of today, who or what are the beasts? And what is the alternative? Prayer. Loving God, allow us to hear you and your new song and the music of the harpists. Guide us and give us wisdom, confidence, and strength to follow Jesus along the way you have chosen for us. Amen.